The Bible says that you'll know that He loves you in this one act. The Bible says there's no greater act of love than for one to lay down their life for a friend. And that's exactly what God did. He sent His only begotten Son to come and to lay down His life for His friend. Who is His friend? Those who would believe in Him. Those who would receive what He's done. Those who would receive His love and His compassion and His mercy. Those who would turn from the way that you're going and you would turn and come back to Him. Just as we talked about Eve and Adam, they had their own plan. They had their own will. And they wanted to take things into their hands. They wanted to search through things and see if there was something that they were missing. They didn't believe that God had already given them everything good. They didn't believe that God truly loved them, but they thought that He was withholding something. So they took their life into their own hands. So they started to make choices that were against what God had said. And you see, God knows all things. The Bible says that He knows everything, that He alone is wise, that He alone is good. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows the future. He knows the past. He knows each and everything. Why is it always a he? I don't think men are. I think it's like what? Because God said it was, he was a he, that's why. The Bible says it. I'm not making it up. I didn't choose. This isn't my opinion that God's a he, but he said it. So I believe what he said. So man took things into his own hands, and the Bible says, how you doing, sir? The Bible also says that the world's flat. That's not true. That the world's flat? Yeah, I'll look it up. Show me it. Where's it at? It's all over. I've never seen it. He said in Job, it says the world's round. So I think you need to check your facts, sir. You know that a flag, a rainbow flag, it actually stands for the faithfulness of God? In the Bible, after God had saved Noah and all of his family, he put a rainbow as a promise that he would never destroy man again by a flood. You see, so I'm, I'm happy that you guys have these flags right here because it stands for the promises of God. It stands for the faithfulness of God. It says that he cannot lie. That God loves each and keep on bringing it. The faithfulness of God. Hallelujah. You are faithful, God. You do keep your promises. Every single one of your promises are yes and amen. I thank you, God, that even in the midst of, of a lot of things that are going on here, that an emblem would be used that promotes your promises, that promotes your faithfulness to man, and that when you make a covenant, you uphold that covenant. Stands for love. God loves each and every one of you. But here's what you have to do to receive His love. Here's what you have to do to come into peace with Him. The Bible says that you must repent, that you must turn away from your wicked ways, that you must turn away from the will of the devil. You see, the will of the devil is that people would be used to go and to go shoot up. I'm actually, I'm actually talking about, you're hurting yourself, bro. I'm actually talking about a gay bar that got shot up. You want to keep being rude about that? So what the devil's will is... They weren't Christians. They said they weren't. No, they weren't. Okay, well, are you the one who judges that? No, it's God says only he makes man's heart. Not you. So you can shut your mouth too. I'm not... Don't talk about false. What you said is not true. God didn't say do not judge. He actually taught us how to judge righteously. Show me the verse. Show me the verse. It's in Matthew chapter 1. He said, don't judge unless you be judged yourself. And then he went on to say, remove the plank from your eye before you try to remove, before you try to remove the splinter from someone else's eyes. So he was actually teaching us to judge in a righteous manner, but not to be a hypocrite. That's what, that's what God says, actually. You see it all over the Bible. You see that Peter actually made a judgment according to Ananias and Sapphira because they had come and they lied to the Holy Spirit. He made a judge right there, a judgment, and they actually died because they lied to the Holy Spirit. Paul made many different judgments when he handed someone over to Satan for the destruction of their flesh so that their souls might not perish, so that they would get a little taste of what hell was going to be like and they would run from it and they would run back to God. You see, Paul made judgments there. The Bible tells us to judge righteously. If God didn't want us to judge, then why would He appoint judges in the earth to uphold order in the earth? That's a judge. Those people are 
judging people. God did not say not to judge. He taught us how to judge. And it's all by His Holy Spirit, and it's all by the wisdom and the knowledge that He gives. So actually, that's not true. Do you have a Bible with you? I have a... Uh, Oh. Yeah, yeah, we got it on a phone over here. Oh, 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 oh. Where's your New Testament? Hey, is there is there somewhere in the Bible where it says every Christian has to carry around? She asked a question. Now you're being rude to her, man. So, does the Bible ever say that every Christian has to carry around a Bible, or you're not a good Christian? No. Does the Bible say you're going to hell? Doesn't say that. No. Yeah, it does. It does though. Hey, can you, can you, I don't know where that scripture's at. You know where that's at? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So here, here's what the Bible says. God said that a man should leave his mother and his father and should be joined to his wife. In the beginning, God made Adam and Eve so that Eve and Adam could have a relationship of love. You see, the, the reason that homosexuality, the Bible is against it, is because it's the opposite of life. You see, two men can't come together and produce life. Two women can't come together and they can't produce life. You see, God is life and He's actually the giver of life. He's created each and every one of us and He desires that you have eternal life, but what you have to do is you have to turn away. What's up, man? Come on over. Will you speak it so everyone can hear? Other people might have the same question as you. I got a question about this. What's up? Then God said He loved you no matter what in any way if you want. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, God. Why y'all posting? Why y'all protesting? We're actually coming to to preach the truth and God does love each and every person he loves you dearly but what he told us is that sin actually leads to death and he came to rescue you of your sins so that you didn't have to go to death because God has a plan and his plan is for you to be with him forever or for all of eternity but the devil has a plan and he's coming he's lied to people to try to get them to commit actions that are opposite of love which is sin that's what sin is actions opposite of love so by us not loving and by us committing sin we actually separate ourselves from God who is love and because of that then he gives us the choice to either be with him for all of eternity or to not be with him for all of eternity and if we choose to continue in our sin then it says that we will be away from him for all of eternity but he has given mercy and compassion he sent his only son Jesus to come to this earth actually to take the punishment that that I deserve because I've sinned I've committed acts um, against love as well um, but Jesus came to take my sins and to take the punishment that I deserve and the death that I deserve and then if I will believe in him and I'll be reconciled into peace with God I'll realize the very purpose that God created me and then I'll be able to live in that by the very Holy Spirit that he gives me to then walk through life and to love him and to love people and to be in a relationship with him so god has actually made a way through jesus for all of your sins to be washed away and for you to come and to have eternal life and for you to be with him forever but what, what you have to do when jesus came uh he preached uh repent which just means to turn it means to turn away from the way that you're going the bible describes there's it says that you're either for god or you're against god and it says that you're either on the road it describes two roads it says there's a road that leads to hell and there's a road that leads to heaven and the bible says that most people are traveling down the road that leads to hell because we're all serving ourselves we're all being selfish to ourselves so so if we're if we're on the road if the majority of people are on the road to hell then, then jesus came and he proclaimed hey turn around stop going that way that that's not the right way so he came to reveal the truth and if we'll turn is, around I mean, and we'll come to god that, one is, that was make us human what that was make us human we got our own selfish fight we got we feel like they do some selfish thing for ourselves sometimes we sometimes deserve it and sometimes we don't but still we deserve it once in a while yeah yeah so each and every man has sinned you're right about that we all have a nature in our flesh actually our body the thing that our soul and our spirit lives in it is evil and it's all about itself because at the end of the age it's going to perish I, sorry i won't go into all that but anyway, so our flesh, really hey man, people are not he asked no, me a question. The platform, they want you to come up and talk. I know. That's really what they want. He asked me a question. Why are you trying to lead him away? To talk to joy, to talk to senders. I want to churches who do support. What if he's about to prove me wrong? I think that's really important. They want, see, it's exactly what he's saying now. He wants you to try to prove him wrong. So yeah, I came here to talk to people, of course. That's why I have a mic so more people can hear me. I know. So I, I just like hey, does he have his own choice? Does he have his own free will? Why don't you let him make his own? choice why are you trying to alter his choice 
Look, I'm here with one agenda, man. I'm not, I don't have some hidden agenda. I'm here so that people can know of the love and the goodness of God. Please don't touch my mic. But the thing is, there are people also who want to hear the answer to his question. My question is, I was trying to let people hear what he was saying. Look, man. Hey, if it, he asked me a question, why are you being rude? Listen, man, you can make your own choice. You don't have to listen to this guy. You can talk to who you want to. You're an adult, right? How old are you? Hey, man, how, how old are you? You can make your own choices. Just because this guy doesn't want to have a conversation doesn't mean that you don't have to. Hey, listen, man. So I'm, I'm just going to tell you the, the rest of the answer, and hopefully you'll, you'll listen. Hey, you're, you're an adult, right? You can make your own decisions. You can make your own choices. But this guy has forcefully come in between us so that you can't listen to the answer of the question that you asked. Okay, well, I'm just going to go back to preaching then. Actually, I'll, I'll just answer the rest of the question. So, yes, each and every person has sinned. You're being rude to them, too. Each and every person has sinned. And, yes, we do have a nature. But, actually, the Bible says that those who believe and are baptized will be saved. It says that we'll be born again. The first person that was about that. My question is already over. Yeah, he's trying to keep it going. Exactly. That's no, no, no. You, do. you just asked me. You said. I want to ask you one question. One question only. Hey, listen, listen. I'm going to tell you the second question that you asked me, and it's going to come to your remembrance. Listen, bro. You just asked me. On and on and on. You just asked me. You just asked me. Doesn't everyone sin? Didn't you ask me that? Doesn't everyone sin? That's what you said, man. I'm not mean. What's up, bro? Hey, you, you asked me, doesn't everyone? So everyone does sin, but the Bible says that when we're born again, actually we're not even the same creature. It says that we become a new creation in Christ Jesus, that our spirit is connected with the Holy Spirit and that we're no longer even the same person, but that we're actually a new person. And then God gives us grace and he gives us the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome every single temptation, to know what the truth is so that we don't believe any lies, so that we don't follow the false shepherd's voice, so that we hear the good shepherd who's trying to lead us on paths of righteousness, who's trying to lead us to a kingdom of righteousness where every single thing is good. So yes, each and every person does have a nature of sin. Each and every person has sinned, but Jesus came so that he could dwell within us, so that he could help us to not sin any longer. You see, why would we want to continue in an addiction that's making us depressed in an addiction? Say someone's addicted to heroin or say someone's addicted to meth. How you doing, sir? Why would someone want to stay in that addiction because it's destroying their bodies, it's destroying their mind, it's destroying their family, and it's destroying the very lives of their kids and all those things? Why would someone want to stay? Jesus came to rescue us from the power of darkness. Hey, thank you guys. You guys know that rainbows, I'm going to say it one more time. You guys know that rainbow actually stands for the, the promise of God? It stands for a covenant that God made. When God flooded the earth and he saved Noah and his family, he made a rainbow that was a covenant between man and God that promised that he would withhold forever. He was proving that he was faithful, that he would never flood the earth and destroy people in that way again. So thank you guys for, for proclaiming the faithfulness of God. Thank you all for proclaiming the very promises of God. God, you are faithful. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your goodness. And I pray that each and one of these people, Father, that are holding these flags right now, God, I pray that they would come to know of your faithfulness. I pray that they will come to know of your goodness. I pray, God, that they would come 
to receive all the promises that you have made to your children, oh God. I pray, God, that you would draw them close to you. Anything that's coming against them, I bind you from blocking their understanding in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that you open up their hearts to understand your love, to understand the truth, to understand your amazing plan of redemption and reconciliation, bringing you back into peace with the Father. You see, when, when Jesus came to the earth, he came and he healed so many people. Why are you guys against healing? You guys are, are standing here trying to block people from hearing the truth. Jesus came to heal many different people. He came to set them free from the power of demons. He came to raise people from the dead. Jesus came and healed people. He came and he delivered people. Every sickness and every disease, Jesus came and he helped. There were people who were blind for 18 years and Jesus came and he gave them their sight back. Why would you guys try to turn people away from getting healed? Why would you want to turn people away from getting delivered? Why would you want to turn people away from getting saved? You see, you can't deny that Jesus walked the earth. The Bible is actually the most accurate history book that's ever been. As far as the, the, the amount of writings that have been compiled together from so many different people, from so many different times that agree with one another, it's the most accurate history book that's ever been written. No one ever could disprove that Jesus did not walk the earth and he was raised from the dead on the third day. God raised Jesus Christ from the dead and said, whoever will believe in him will not perish but will have everlasting life. You see, God is offering everlasting life to you this very day. Right now, we're separated from God because of sin and we've handed our authority to Satan. You see, when the devil came to tempt Jesus in the desert, he came to try to get him to commit actions that were opposite of love. He came and he said, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. I'll give you everything if you just bow down and you worship me. He said, it was given to me. Well, how was it given to him? Did God give the devil all the kingdoms of the world? No, God did not. God actually gave dominion and authority in all the kingdoms to man. But by man obeying the devil, we gave those things to him. So we've given our authority to the devil and the devil is coming to steal, to kill, and to destroy us. The devil would love to take your life before you're old, but you know God's plan is that you would have prolonged days, that you would be blessed, that you would have a life full of love and peace of joy and all those things. I'm not promising them that if you come to Christianity, you won't go through trials, you won't go through hard times, you will go through hard times, you will go through trials, you will go through persecution for His name's sake. The Bible said that the world will hate Christians because they first hated Jesus. But what I can promise you is that he has a peace that's beyond understanding, that he has a joy that's inexpressible, that he has a supernatural love that will meet you and will accept you and will transform you into his image and will help you to learn how to love. And he'll teach you what the truth is and he'll transform you by the renewing of your mind. That's God's plan for your life. But what you have to do is because you've, given, you've been given free will, you have to turn to Him. You have to trust in Him. You have to believe that He is God. You have to believe that He is love. You have to believe that He's true. And if you believe Him, He's going to heal you. He's going to take away your depression. Today, Jesus will take away any depression. He'll take away any anxiety. If any of you have sickness or any of you have disease, which I'm sure many of you do, is there anyone here that has sickness, disease, Anyone here who's suffering from depression, maybe you become lonely. We got one over here. You see, many people are suffering, and Jesus came to heal us. Jesus came to take away loneliness. Do, are you, do you have a sickness or disease or just loneliness or depression or anxiety? You're not sure? Okay. Anyone else over there? What, what I'm telling you, young lady, is Jesus loves you and He'll heal you, and He'll save you, and He'll take away any sickness or disease. I, I know you're around other people, um, and you probably care what they think about you, 
but I care about you, and God loves you, and He cares about you. Um, and if you'll turn to Him and you'll ask Him for help, He'll come and He'll help you. Because we all have struggles in life. We all get lonely when we're living without God. We all get depressed. People without Him, they get sickness and disease. Bad things happen. People go through traumas. Maybe something happened with your parents. Maybe your parents died in a car wreck. Maybe your dad was an alcoholic and he abused you. Maybe you've been molested when you were a child. We've all gone through many different things in life, but what Jesus came to do is He came to take your heart of stone and He came to give you a heart of flesh. He came to proclaim liberty to the captives. Many people here today, you feel like you're in captivity. You feel like you're in a prison. You feel like something's holding you back in life. Anytime you get one step towards joy, you get jerked back and depression comes upon you and you go through bipolar spells and you go through your weeks and you, you're not happy. You're not joyful. You cry at nighttime when you're alone. Jesus came to bring you freedom. He came you to bring, bring you out of that captivity. He came to bring you out of that prison. He came to rescue you from the power of the devil. The Bible says that many have been caught in a snare of the devil and they've been taken captive to do his will. You see, I'm also one of those people who was at one point Oh, I get it. Yeah. yeah. It's all about him. No, actually, Jesus, Jesus said in Christ, there's neither male nor female. There's neither Greek nor Jew. Race doesn't matter. He nor she matters to Jesus. He loves each and every person, and he saves each and every person. The Bible actually says that the the husband should love the wife and consider her as a co-heir with him. That she's going to go to heaven too. You see, God loves women and men. God made women. If God didn't care about women, He wouldn't have made them. He could have just made men. Are you kidding me? Each and every woman, you've been formed in your mother's womb. Each and every man, you've been formed in your mother's womb. Women have a, a very important job in this life. They have a very important role to play. And God will reveal that very role to you. Maybe you're a mother here. Maybe you feel like you've failed in many places. Maybe you feel like you've messed up and maybe your child has become in prison or in jail or homeless or maybe they're, they're cutting themselves or maybe they've, they've written suicide notes before. And maybe you've placed that blame upon yourself. I can tell you that Jesus came to heal your heart. Jesus came to heal your relationship with your children. He came to reconcile you all to unity and harmony and love. And that's what Jesus will do for you if you turn to Him. But you have to turn to Him. You have to turn from your ways. You have to turn to Him. You have to turn from the path of destruction. And you make the free will choice. And then Jesus will come and He'll reach out His hand. And immediately He'll come and He'll rescue you. And He'll help you. And He'll give you His Holy Spirit. He'll wash you and cleanse you right where you're at. You don't have to clean up your life first. You don't have to get rid of the drugs first. You don't have to break your alcohol addiction by going through the 12-step process or however many it is now. You see, God will give you the Holy Spirit and He'll help you to overcome each and everything that you're struggling with. The Bible describes the Holy Spirit as the helper. Many people, the way that you're reacting today, you would call Him the hater or something like that. But you see, Jesus has sent to His children the Helper to help us, to heal us, to give life to our bodies. God loves each and every one of you. And for those of you who are willing to listen, those of you who maybe you've claimed to be a Christian before, and maybe you've kind of gotten away from it, or maybe you even attend a church. I've heard of churches in Bowling Green that, that support these festivals and support these things that are going on. But I can tell you that God doesn't support these things. That actually these things are leading you down a path that's making your life worse. That's leading you and placing more burdens upon your life. But Jesus came to take those burdens away and to place His burden which is light and His yoke which is easy upon you. Jesus loves you and He wants you to come to Him. 
He's made a way for each and every man to come into peace with the Father, for each and every man to receive eternal life. He died once for all. He died one time for every sin. His love was so great that it covered every single sin if you'll believe in Him and you'll submit to Him and you'll receive Jesus into your life. There may be someone who's listening today, maybe even a child who's listening today, and you say, you know what, I'm tired of where I'm at in life. I'm tired of everything that I'm going through. I'm tired of getting beat down. I'm tired of being rude to people because for some reason I can't just stop being rude. I'm tired of doing that. Or you're tired of, of continually hurting your children or hurting your siblings or hurting your father and your mother. But for some reason you can't get free from the very thing that's hurting so many people around you. Maybe you're here today and you've been hurting yourself. Maybe you're here today and you've lost all hope. Maybe you want to receive hope again. Maybe you want to realize what hope is. If you've lost all hope today, I come to proclaim that there is hope for every single person. That Jesus Christ came and proclaimed hope. He said that there is good news and that's what we're bringing to you today. God is bringing you good news today that He loved the world. He so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever will believe in Him will not perish but will have everlasting life. You see, God is a righteous judge. And those who believe in Jesus, He's going to wash away and forget their sins. He'll never bring them up again and He'll reward you based on your good works. But you see, He's also a righteous judge. I'll give you this analogy really quick. If there was a murderer who had murdered, say, 20 different people, and he went and he stood before a judge and he said, hey, well, look, judge, I thought you were merciful. I thought you were compassionate. I thought that, that, that you loved people and that you were forgiving. I've done more good in my life than bad. You know, I did murder people for about two or three years. But the majority of my life, I've actually been a good person. Maybe someone stands before that judge who's a murderer. Is that judge, if he's a good judge, if he's not corrupt or if he's not been paid, is that judge going to say, okay, well, since you've done more good than bad, I'm just going to let you off the hook? No, that judge is going to give the right consequence for the actions. And the Bible says that God will by no means clear the guilty, that without the remission, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. So God is a righteous judge in the same manner. But here's what he's done. If you could imagine being in that courtroom, as that murderer getting ready to be sentenced to death or to 35 years in jail, Jesus came and he would have stood up in that courtroom and said, hey, let them off the hook. I will take the punishment that they deserve. I'll take the death that they deserve. That's what Jesus did. Why did he do it? Because he was forced? Nope, Jesus wasn't forced to do it. He said, no man can take my life unless I willingly give it up. He did it because he loved the Father. He did it because he loved you. Jesus loves each and every person. And if you will trust in Him today, if you'll put your faith in Him today, if you'll call upon His name as Lord, what that word Lord means, that word Lord means owner, controller, and ruler. So it means that God, I'm no longer going to live for myself. I'm no longer going to live for my selfishness. I'm no longer going to hurt people. I'm no longer going to hurt myself. I'm no longer going to do things that would come against love. If you'll do that and you'll turn from those things and you'll turn to Him and you'll say, God, I want to live for the life that you created me for. I want to be able to love you the best that I can. I want to love other people the best that I can. If you'll say that today and you'll call out upon Jesus as Lord, then He will come and He'll rescue you and He'll transfer you into the kingdom of His beloved Son. He'll give you the Holy Spirit and He'll give you everlasting life. Man, I hope you guys are receiving. I hope you can receive the love of Jesus someday. Obviously, it doesn't look like you are today, but God doesn't want you to perish, man. God doesn't want you to go to hell. I don't want you to go to hell. He's proclaimed His truth, and He's revealed it through Jesus' life, and He loves you. He wants you to spend all of eternity with you. You love me? And of course, I love you. That's gay. It's not gay. Does a father love his son? Is that gay? No, that's not gay. Does God love men? Yes, He does. Is that gay? Do you love your Do you love your dad? Yeah, you probably do. Or your guardian, I should say. 
Yeah, you probably do. It's not gay for a man to love another man. You see, that's where the definition of love has been skewed. Love is not sexual intercourse. It is between a man and a wife in marriage to bring them together as one flesh to produce more life, to give and to bring another gift into this world. So if you would like to receive Jesus, if you would like all of your sins to be washed away, if you would like to come into peace in a relationship with a good Father that loves you and wants you to spend all of eternity with Him, then I want you to repeat this prayer after me out loud. Jesus said, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father. He said, if you don't confess me before men, then I won't confess you before my Father. And that's the very reason that I'm asking you to pray this out loud. Listen, your eternity is not worth the, the approval of your friends. If you're so worried about the approval of your friends and you're willing to just go to hell with them, but I tell you today that the Holy Spirit is convicting your heart today. He's convicting you. And if you'll receive His conviction, if you'll receive the truth, He will invite you into His kingdom and He's preparing a party. He's preparing the wedding supper, wedding supper of Christ for all those who would believe in Him, for all those who would come to Him. If you'd like to make that decision today to receive freedom in Jesus' name, if you'd like to be healed or delivered or to be kept from evil from this day forward, then repeat this prayer after me. God in heaven, I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. I turn away from sin and I turn to you. I believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, that He died for my sins, and that You raised Him from the dead. I ask You, Jesus, to fill me with the Holy Spirit, to lead me. I give my life to You. I'm now Your child. You are my Father. I'm forgiven, and I'm accepted in the Beloved. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. If you've said that prayer today, I tell you that all of your sins are forgiven you, that you've just been born again. You're no longer the same person. Your past has been washed away. Behold, all things have become new. He's just given you the Holy Spirit to live inside of you, to help you throughout this life, to give you eternal life, and to teach you and train you, and to help you to overcome sin to help you not to walk in sin any longer, but to walk in love from here on out. It's important that you get to know God more. This is not a one-way ticket to heaven. It's the introduction to a relationship with the Father. And the Bible says that he who endures until the end will inherit the promises. It says that he who has continues in the faith, he who continues in trusting in God, those people God will keep with them for all of eternity. The way that you get to know God more is you can talk to Him and He'll talk right back to you. You see, the Bible says, My sheep will hear my voice. So we can actually hear the very voice of God. If any of you would like to hear the thoughts that God has for you today, come on up and we can tell you the thoughts that God has for you. I've got a buddy over here. The Bible calls it a gift of prophecy. You hear what God says and you speak it out. You can hear how God sees you. You can hear what God's future looks like if you'll submit to Him, if you'll call upon Jesus as Lord. It's important that you communicate with Him every day just as you would meet someone for the first time you don't know them very well. But as you continue to hang out with Him, as you continue to talk to them and to listen to them, you get to know them more and more, and God is the same way. The more we hang out with Him, the more we know Him. He already knows us completely. But the more that we talk to Him, the more that we hang out with Him in His presence, the more we get to know Him, and the more we get to know what pleases Him, and we can become more and more like Him. The Bible He's given us, it's all inspired by the Holy Spirit. It's all the truth, and the very truth that's in that Bible will set you free, and it'll keep you free. It's important to get around other believers, other children of God. The Bible says to encourage one another daily, to build one another up, to love one another, to comfort, to exhort one another and we all need encouragement from one another we all need to work together those who are Christians in order to perform the perfect will of God 
in order for love to truly be manifested in this earth. We all Christians need to come together. Is there anyone here today who would say you're a Christian? We got a couple over here. Really? You guys are Christians? Yeah? Good stuff. Good stuff. So, so where in the Bible, um, let me figure out what's a good question to ask you. What's up? Having a little trouble? No, I'm just trying to be gentle, man. I don't want to, I don't want to hurt anyone. So, where, where does it say in the Bible that, that homosexuality is okay? Like, like I'm, I'm really trying to have an honest conversation with you. Yeah, yeah, you should definitely love everyone equally. Because I love you. I love you as myself. Yeah, yeah. So God has... Hey, other people probably have the same thoughts as you. So if you say it in the mic, then you might help other people. We really don't care. I'm talking to her, sir. So, so the answer to that is, what if the very thing that you're enjoying, what if the very thing that you're doing is actually allowing evil to come upon you and it's allowing your life to be destroyed and, and destructed? What if, what if that thing? Are there, are there consequences to choices? Hey man, I'm trying to have a conversation with them. I also don't care. Okay, so do you think it outside of uh Bring it up? What what was your question? So do you also pick it outside of uh Mars, okay, man. Stores, <laughs> it's a war, bro. Baby for your soul. What else is a problem? Yeah, yeah, I, I go down I go downtown pretty much two or three times okay. a week. Jesus um, won over two thousand in the park. On the cross. And, it, and I still I still proclaim the truth down there. The, the, the reason that I proclaim the truth is because I want to see you guys live the best life. I want to see you all blessed. I want to see you all have eternal life. I want to see you free from any sickness or any disease. I don't want you to be depressed. I don't want you to be lonely. I don't want any of that. That's okay. You can respect them. It's kind of the, the same concept of why do police officers arrest people and put them in jail. And it's because that person isn't willing to stop hurting people or isn't willing to stop murdering or stealing. So they take them and they separate them. They separate people so that that harm can't continue to be done. So it's the same thing. Same thing with God. If someone's not going to stop hurting people, if someone's not going to stop sinning, then he'll eventually he gives them a time to repent he doesn't just hate everyone who sins god god loves each and every person no not live streaming it'll probably go on youtube yeah uh yeah i do yeah i do i'm just here you also check out mine i do a lot of art I know I did a couple icons for Pride Month. They were very nice. I got a few. What's fans, your uh, fans What's your handle? Uh, Space Ross. Space Ross. I'm gonna connect with you on YouTube. I don't follow do do a lot of subscribing on YouTube or whatever, but you will see my name pop up on there. Jake Freeman 027. We'll connect with Space Ross. Okay. okay. Uh, Sound cool. Hey, is there is there any way we can pray for anyone today? I mean, I'm sure my girlfriend would love it. Okay. Yeah. Y'all come and we'll pray for you guys. Can we pray? Can we do that? Y'all go ahead and lead us. We'll be okay. right here. Yeah? Okay. Hey, is there, is there anything specific? Like oh, yeah. anything that you're struggling with right now? Like in life, uh, anything? I mean, I just switched schools. My brothers, they've been getting in a little bit of trouble. That's hard. I mean, it's not much. Uh, my mom, she's just gotten a new job, so she's been working hard.
Do you, do you have any uh, like pain or sickness in your body or anything that's like bothers you? I mean, I've got dysphoria, that's something, but hopefully here soon I can start testosterone. Dys dysphoria. What's, is that, what is that? Uh, messed up, like, uh, like unbalanced or whatever? Like. Uh, actually, no, it's, um, it's the feeling of not identifying with how you were born. Um, and it's just the sort of issue that can make you physically sick or emotionally sick. Awesome. And okay. the best way to fix that is to start certain hormones that will fix certain things. And there's some what if we did this? Help. I, I want to tell you what we'll pray for. Can I do this? Go for it. I want to pray that God completely heals you of this for you, 100%. Because when the wrath of God was poured out on the sin of the world through Jesus, the Bible says that by his stripes we were healed. And so through the blood of Jesus, we can proclaim that healing. And that thing will leave right now in Jesus' name. You'll never experience it again. Okay. Will you come in yeah. alignment for that first? Can you, how, how often can you tell when it's affecting you? Anytime I look in the mirror. Oh, really? Yeah? What, you feel like? It just, it can make you physically sick by just looking at your own body. So if you're yeah. Wrong Space body, rocks. That the person that you're looking at in the mirror is not you. Yeah. You ever, you feel like hatred towards yourself and things? Yes. I was, you feel I like was anything tells you? You feel like anything tells you like it's not worth living or like it it sounds like hatred. But God really really does love you. If we if we if we leave with anything, if I if I, when I walk away from this conversation, the one thing that I want you to have is space room. It's the only thing I know about you. Is that Jesus values you so highly. Yeah. So, okay. So, I, I was asking, is this is this your girlfriend? No. Oh, oh okay. no. This is this is just my dude friend. friend. I just made him. I just met him today. Okay. Uh, right here. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She's uh, back at her house. She oh, gotcha. Today. Gotcha. Sadly. Okay. So I, I was asking her the, the the thing that you said. I can't even pronounce it. Um, but it it makes you feel like you. You don't like yourself. You hate yourself. You ever feel like anything tells you to like harm yourself? It's not worth living. Yeah. Things I like that. Some at one point. Yeah. Yeah. So Jesus came to set you free from all that, um, and to to like He said to, to heal you from all that. Um, we're we're gonna pray for you today. Um, and what what it is is it's it's God revealing His love for you, and His compassion for you, um, and that He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants you to have the best life that you can. Um, and He wants you to spend all of eternity in a perfect place with Him. Um, so we're going to pray for you, and God's going to set you free. Um, but I will tell you, things like this, um, they try to come back. But, but the way that they try to come back, so you, you see that you're not stronger than it, right? Because if you were completely, if you could overcome it yourself, you wouldn't be dealing with it, right? So, so Jesus is way stronger than it. So you're going to be healed and then afterwards if you accept Jesus and you say thank you and you say Jesus I want you to help me and I want you to keep this away from me then then he'll come with you and he'll do that yeah. but if you if you try to keep fighting it on your own then over time it'll try to come back on you and it'll overtake you uh, hey, but what's important give us just a moment. I think, uh, she's what you, uh, some water water right here hey well yeah all right what's your name all right. Father, we thank you, Lord. What's your name? In Jesus' name, we command no, every... You, you want to sit down? Yeah, yeah, here. Hey, look, there, there's shade right here. Don't, don't go in the sun. You can sit down right here. You can lean up, lean up against this thing. I bind every unclean spirit, anything that's coming against her, trying to attack her. I command it to go now in Jesus' name. Panic attack, I command you to go now in Jesus' name. Every unclean spirit, I command you to leave her now in Jesus' name. Okay, okay, that's fine. In Jesus' name, any attacks or anything. Jesus, I thank you that you came to give her peace, to give her joy. I pray that peace come into her right now. I pray that joy come into her right now in Jesus' name. Be completely healed. 
right now in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that you love her for your deliverance, for everything in Jesus' name. Hey, what's, hey, let's, let's, let's grab this stuff. Let's go. We, we got to pray for you. You know that that's a demon manifesting. Yeah, you think so? Yeah, for sure, bro. Said, yeah, for sure. Oh, 100%. Uh, Hey, keep, no, no, keep, keep that up. We'll just carry that with us. Yeah, that's a, that's a demon manifesting. It's happened right when we were about to pray for him for deliverance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what else? I've, I've seen it before, I never really thought of it like that, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I've seen it a lot, but I just never really thought of it like that. Yeah, man. That demon was coming out. You feel better? You're doing better now? Good. Good stuff. All right. There's no reason to be sorry. Yeah, you can't help that at all. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if it if it's okay, can we uh, can we finish praying for you all? And your, your names again were? Pardon? Wait, your names again were? Um, just call me Space Rocks. <laughs> Space Alex. Rocks. Or Space if you like. And Alex. Alex. I like your hair, Alex. Thank you. That's cool. You're very welcome. It's bleeding right. everywhere, but thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Space Rocks and Alex. All right, well, Father, can, can, you, can we pray for you all too? No, thank you? Okay. Well, Father, we thank you for Space Rocks and Alex. I thank you for your love for them, God. I thank you for your amazing plan for their lives, God. I thank you, God, that you desire for them to have amazing lives, God, full of love, full of peace, full of joy. And Lord, as, as they've said, God, they, um, they have something coming against them that, that's trying to make them think bad about themselves or trying to make them hate themselves or anything like that. And Jesus, I thank you that your word says that we're accepted in the beloved, Amen. that we're accepted in Jesus, when we come to know Him and when we come to believe in Him. And Lord, I just pray that you heal them completely, set them completely free that, so that they never have to deal with this again, so that they never have to struggle with it again in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that they would love themselves, so oh God, that they wouldn't look in the mirror and have any type of bad thoughts. If anything is trying to give them bad thoughts, I commanded to leave them in Jesus' name, just as that snake came and tried to speak to Eve anything that's trying to speak to them that would try to cause them to self-harm or try to cause them not to like themselves or try to cause them to be depressed or sad or anything, I command to go now in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray that they would know how much you love them, God, that they would receive your love, your goodness, your faithfulness, Lord, and that they will spend all of eternity with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Awesome. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank yeah, you very nice you're welcome. Thank you very much. So, yeah, again, and I, I, I really feel this, especially it's for both of you all, but it's it's really important for you to understand, especially when you hear these things that talk about your image and how it, you're disappointed in how you look. You know. Sorry, it just sounds right in my eye. I, I, I really cool. We can back up in the shade over yeah. here. <clears throat> I'm sorry. What, what, what about that curb? You know, that one's in the shade. It looks like you're still going to be in the sun right there. Uh, I mean, the sun's not okay. in my eye. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of shocked. Okay. okay. <laughs> but the very fact that we say that God is love, the absence of God is the absence of love. Any voice is telling you to be displeased with your image or to be unhappy with, with you, they're not from God. God loves you. He he, he, he literally died on the cross for you. Like, I just, whenever we struggle with this, what, what's in the mission of, and this is not an accusation, but it's in the mission 
of us understanding that we truly don't know the love of God for us. Because if we really believe that God loves us, we really truly believe it, then we've received it. Right? There's no question when I look in the mirror in the morning that, that I'm wonderful because God created me to be wonderful. The Bible says that we were fearfully and wonderfully made. God didn't make a mistake when he made me. He knew exactly what he wanted out of me. And so because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, there's no mistake here. I, I don't have to look in the mirror and be afraid of what I see because God made me fearfully and wonderfully. The Bible says that before you were in the womb, I knew you. He knew you before you were even born and had great plans for both of you all. And I want you, like that's the most important thing, I feel like. You've got to understand that that, the, that those voices look at you when you're in the mirror and they tell you lies about yourself. That's what the Word of God is for. It's, it's, it's true. The Word tells us the truth about ourselves. And the truth is, is that God loves you with a passion that will never, ever, ever die. And because He does love you, you can be in love with yourself too. Very nice. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. We don't want to be bugging you guys. But it's fine. My mom's supposed to call me in a moment and come pick us up. All right. Uh, well, so the, do you have a what now book right, like, on you? Yeah, yeah. I so the, you back back to too. Yeah, go, go for it. It's in the small one. The small one? Okay. Yeah. So the... <laughs> so what, what, what Jesus did, um, because we're, none of us are perfect, I'm not perfect, he's not perfect, you're not perfect, no one's perfect. So what Jesus did is he came and he was perfect. So what, what he earned in his life, he earned everlasting life to be alive forever in a perfect place. Um, but me and you, because, because we've fallen short, um, actually the, the Bible... If you, if you need to talk to somebody, that's, that's not the... If you, I mean, you want to come to service, come to service, but if you need help, if you feel like you need to talk to somebody, come, come out there. So... so be, because we're not perfect, the Bible says that we can't be with God because He is perfect. But Jesus came and He took the punishment that we deserve and that you deserve and that everyone else deserves. And He took the death that we deserved and then God raised Him from the dead and said that if we'll believe in Him, that we'll, we'll get the everlasting life that He deserved. Because Jesus was perfect, He earned everlasting life. So if we believe in Him, He'll come live in us. and. And we'll have, and we'll have everlasting life if we believe in Him. And then you guys will come to know when Jesus comes in you, He'll He'll open up, He'll open up your understanding. And and that these things that we're talking about, the truths in the Bible, the, the very truth that He said that set Him free from insecurity and from self hate and from all that stuff, He's getting that from the Bible because that's what God said about Him. And God will do the same thing. Jesus will open up your understanding so that you can receive the truth, and it'll and it's what's going to set you free from going back to a place of of not liking yourself and and all the, all that stuff. I mean, I, I don't understand completely how. That, I mean, I've had my own insecurities and I've had things like that, um, but I can't say that I honestly can put myself in your shoes. Um, but I know that God knows everything. I know that he looks. Right down there. Yeah. I'm so sorry for the no, no, you're good. from y'all's like post down there. There's no we're so problems. sorry that we got y'all. We were about to leave. Complex. We're not offended in any way. We're, we're glad that, that it happened just like it happened. So. Yeah. Well, thank you hey, all for talking to us. I love you guys. Okay. Love you too, sir. Remember this again. Jesus does love you so much. Very important. Amen. See you all. Careful in them state skates there.